Hi traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar and it's, uh, hold on, you know what I should do? I don't do this that often, so I'm going to do it right now. Um, analysis of the FX major currencies. on the morning edge now click here to join in okay okay there we go all right so let's go um uh, let's go through the majors here. All right, let's get let's get this uh, party started, and let's go to the uh, bias chart, and uh, we're going to do one at a time. We can do them nice and slow too, because this market's not really moving too quickly at the moment. Um, let's go over to the euro. All right, so starting off the, with the euro dollar, and, and, and as you guys know, this is a uh, our, our, our levels are very well defined. I mean, if you look at our analysis from yesterday, all right, we drew that arrow yesterday. So, hey, I moved up to 113, 113.10, which would be the 618 retracement, right? And then you can turn lower. So, overnight, we hit 113.07. Well, you know, that's pretty damn close, I would say, right? Pretty damn close. Um, we pushed right up into resistance, previous support, current resistance as we had anticipated, and uh, we had turned lower. So the good news is now we know, I mean, today we know, here, let's get rid of these now. That's after the fact. But now we know that the 618 actually matters, okay? That's a big deal for today. So resistance right now is 113.10. Beyond that is 113.60, as you guys know, all right? And by the way, that is, uh, that's major resistance. I'll put an asterisk there. We're in a range for right now. Uh, support, all right, so support, uh, as we have been discussing, is at 112.30. That is the breakout point. That should be very strong support today, and as Paul said, and I agree with him. He goes, you know, you know, uh, you know, anything that's you know, hawkish for the dollar that Janet Yellen says, it, it, the the dollar, the the euro dollar could drop like another sixty pips. He's right. I mean, you know, if we fall here, we're probably just going to fall to support and find some support down here at one twelve thirty. I doubt we're going to go much further than that today, but you you never know. You know, you never know. It depends what she says. She could say some, she could say some things that are very, very dovish or hawkish for the U.S. dollar today, and maybe we could get an exaggerated move further. All right. Um. So, right now, resistance here, support here, before the FOMC. Uh, chair's speech. I wouldn't be surprised if we be, we get to mid range. You guys know mid range is pretty common, right? Pretty common between a between a range. We end up sitting here just before, um, you know, getting a big breakout one direction or the other. So uh, I would be looking for a move. Probably, you know, maybe we might drift down another ten pips before, you know, in the in the next hour and a half uh, before she speaks. That might be it, or two and a half hours. But anyway, let's go over to the cable. All right, so the pound found uh, some near-term support around the 131.80 level. And yesterday, we drew. If the pound comes down, it's going to find some support on trend line support. We drew an arrow and said, oh, we're going to find support here. Or break down and go through here. So what we did is we found support right on the trend line, which this is this makes the pound even more interesting right now, because now you know 
the breakdown point before it actually breaks down. Um, so what do I mean by that? If the dollar is bullish following Janet Yellen's speech, we break through this spike low here at 138, 3180, and before we break down through this 131.65. Okay, this trend line is obviously holding. Okay, obviously. So 131.65 is support, but we'll already know that that support's breaking ahead of that. 31.65, that is key support. Now, the flip side is, if you guys want to think from a risk-reward standpoint, now, I, I don't recommend doing this, but, um, you know, if you guys are a bunch of risk-takers and you're like, listen, Janet Yellen, she's going to be dovish. There's no way she could be hawkish. I hate the dollar. I am love the pound. Too many people are short the pound. I'm going to get long. Hey, listen, if you want to get long right now, get long. Put your stops below here. You're risking about 40 pips, but if it breaks down, you don't want to be long. But you have good risk reward here to be on the long side for a move back up to here. Now, if we break, you guys know that if this breaks, through this resistance right here, 132.75, it's going to squeeze. 3275 okay we are in a range but we're, in, we're we're gonna break higher or lower today this is this is this is the this is the great news with the with the cable okay great news with the cable is we're gonna do this today not necessarily today I mean over the course of the next couple of days you know if we break out if we break down we're gonna do that that's the great news the, the, the bad news is figuring out what the hell is going to happen here for the next couple hours, right? But um, breakout is above or below, and, and, and it's nice. It's nice when you can identify that because you know, hey, I, you know, I may not take a position right now, but I know where I'm going to get bullish and I know where I'm going to get bearish, plain and simple, right? Okay. Let's go over to the Swissy. As you guys know, uh, I am long the dollar Swiss. I had been buying it since, uh, you know, 96 cents down here, 96, the, the, the uh, right shoulder, if you will. Uh, I'm only long two-thirds size position now because I sold uh, a third of it yesterday when we were at uh, 96.82 um, yesterday. I sold it up here. Like I said, I've... At this point in time, even if I get stopped out for break even, I've or I, I get stopped out of the rest of my position, I've already taken some off the table. All right. The flip side is we have an inverted head and shoulder pattern here. So if we break above 96, let's call it 90, it breaks above 96.90. We should hit 97.50 without much of an issue. That's the inverted head and shoulder pattern. The flip side to that is if we break through 96.40, we're probably going back to 96 pretty easily. Okay? We are in a range. Wait, 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 wait. With the pound. I'm sorry. The pound is still bearish. My bad. That, that, that pound is still, the cable is still bearish because, remember, as long as we're below 135. I'm sorry. I'm, it's Friday. Bear with me. I have to go back to the cable just so you all know. Um, we are in a range, but we're actually in broke, we're, we're, we're in broke back territory. Ha <laughs> Look, I can make myself laugh. Um, we're in breakdown territory. As long as we're below 135, it is still bearish. You know, I, I have to keep it that way. Um, but we are in a tight, tight apex right now, which, like I said, we break out today, we're going back to 135. We break down today, we're probably going back to 130. Um, and you can see that range is tightening, obviously. Okay, let's go into the dollar yen. So the dollar yen is actually in a bearish trend, as you all know. But I'm going to give you the buts. 
the dollar yen, uh, as as we know, um, has really, you know, um, held. Okay, this lower trend line. Okay, we're hold, we're we're at this lower trend line right now. This is the same same analysis from yesterday. Nothing's changed here. Okay, a break below 100 exposes some serious downside. All right, because below 100, you really start to expose the lower end of this channel. Which you know, if you look at the lower end of the channel, it takes us. We could be at 98, 96, 95. I mean, you know, that's the risk. Okay, so if we break below 100, it gets probably, you know, I mean, you know, obviously we have. To, I'm going to write down this too. 99.55, okay. Just because 99.55, if you guys don't recall, is the spike low from down here. But if we break through 100, I think it's it's almost, in my opinion, it's almost a foregone conclusion that we're we're going back down to like 98 or or below. Okay. Now the flip side of that is if we break above this 101, um, that'll create a squeeze that takes us back to the upper end of the channel, which is, is still in a bearish trend, but 101 is um, you know 101 is still still key resistance all right let's go into the dollar Canadian so here's the Canadian now I'm gonna give you guys the analysis that I did yesterday with the dollar Canadian because I really want you to understand what's at stake here and what um, I in my in my viewpoint what people are looking at all right so if you take a look at the Canadian and you go out to the daily chart, um, what I what I think happened here, in my in my opinion, is you um, you know we're, we're we're forming this pennant, right? Okay. Uh, last week or two weeks ago, we started a breakdown. You know, we started a breakdown through this th through this support here. See that support? We cracked all the support. You probably got a lot of people that got very bullish the Canadian currency, meaning they're short the dollar Canadian. You, know, you look at this, um, you look, you look at the longer term uh, view of the dollar Canadian, and you go, "Oh my God!" Um, here we are in a pennant. You know, we're breaking down. Probably heading back to uh, to 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 one ten again. Everybody, you know, the crude oil is going back to sixty. I'm going to get really bullish to Canadian currency right now, right? This is the thought process two weeks ago. And in my opinion, it looked pretty convincing, you know, two weeks ago. You, you look at it, you go, dude, we're breaking down. I mean, you know, th this is this is it. It's over. It's over. Let's write off the Canadian currency. Let's just get long and long like Donkey Kong and, you know, things going to hell in a handbasket, the dollar, dollar Canadian, it's going down to, you know, it, it's 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 going in a free fall. What I think a lot of the traders at that stage in the game really didn't pay attention to is a longer term trend line. It looks like this. Okay. That really. Okay, let me grab it here. There it is. This longer term trend line here didn't quite, you know, see that one, and that stopped us on a dime. Okay, you know, last week, and now here we are. You, you got people that are probably aggressively short the dollar Canadian or long Canadian currency, you know, expecting this move down here. All of a sudden, it gets stopped in its tracks and it bounces. Now what happened from last week is you got a bunch of people that are short and they're going, oh crap, are we, go are we even going to go down there again? And so if you think about all of those people that just got short and here they are still short, they're probably thinking, man, if we get back above 130, I got to get the hell out, right? So if we go back above 130, we're going to squeeze. You know, the flip side of that is that they're also going, okay, if we break below this yellow trend line, then, then, then it's game on and, you know, we can rest easy. But now, in my opinion, 
the dollar Canadian is 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 set up for a short squeeze. Or you know anybody who's long the dollar the, the Canadian currency could really get squeezed here, but we have to break above. In my opinion, we have to break above. Uh, let me grab this. 129.70. So, you know, if we break above 129.70 in the dollar Canadian, that's going to create a bit of a short squeeze. It's going to create a flurry of all those people that shorted over the last two weeks that bought the Canadian currency. Um, and, and by the way, we are we are bearish right now. We're we're bearish because we've moved out of that that pennant. But I, like I said, I think the risk is it 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 it, it blasts the other way. Now, the flip side is if we start breaking through some of this support and then we can clear, you know, this lower level, and then 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 the coast is clear for anybody to short the dollar Canadian. All right, we have support at one twenty eight sixty. We have resistance at one twenty nine seventy. I have no Canadian exposure. Uh, no, I take that back. <laughs> I take that back. I'm actually short the New Zealand Canadian from yesterday. I'm down like 15 pips. I'm just sitting in it, but um, it's not going to do me any favors. I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to do me any favors if if the dollar Canadian breaks 129.70. Okay, it's not. If the dollar Canadian does this above this, you know, 129.70, it does what we're talking about here. If that happens, it's probably going to probably going to hurt the trade that I'm currently in, right? Just some food for thought. Okay. You know, because I, I try to I try to come to you guys with the, the most unbiased opinion as possible. All right. Stand by. One second, guys. Okay. Um, Let's uh, let's go over to the let's go over to the uh, kiwi. All right, so here's the kiwi. Now, the kiwi is in a wedge, as you guys know. We didn't quite dip as far to support as I thought we were going to, but as you can see, we're wedging right into resistance. Now, um, just to, to take a step back, here's the daily chart. So, the daily chart, you know, we've had this channel for a long time. It's you know, it's just been it's been forming. Um, Seventy three forty is resistance. Seventy two fifty is support in this wedge. All right. If we break through the support, let me just move. I'm just going to move all this over. Okay. If we break through support here, that's going to create some downside. If we if we go higher, above 73.40, I would expect to move up to 74 cents. Then I move lower, which you know it looks like we could squeeze. It, it it really does. You know, if you think about this, here's your channel, right? There's your channel resistance. Let me remove that really quick. Let's grab this, copy, paste. Okay. Okay. We can we can squeeze up to seventy four cents without much of an issue. All right. So. Support seventy two. Whoops, seventy two. I think it's seventy now. Whatever the uh, whatever the lows are here, seventy two eighty five. 
Actually, it's going to be more like right here. Seventy-two seventy, and then um, and that's going to be key support. That's why I put an asterisk there. Key resistance will be seventy-three forty. That's obviously really critical resistance right now, and we are in a range. But even a move up to seventy-four cents, I think, is going to be a selling opportunity in my view. Okay. All right, guys, uh, I'll be back in a few moments. When I come back, we will continue on with our analysis of the Aussie dollar index, peso, Nordic currencies. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back shortly. Thanks for being here. And TGIF. All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I'm going to welcome you all back. And um, let's go ahead and uh, go into the Aussie dollar finish up what we're doing here. All right, so the Aussie, um, it is, uh, you know, pushed up into, it's actually pushed up in, see, I don't know, I, I kind of got to delete it. I don't want to delete everything here, but what I want to do is, let me get rid of some of this stuff. I, this channel, I've, I've really been unsure of this channel. Um, okay, so first and foremost, all right, so this channel, I'm, not, I'm really not, like I said, I'm not 100% not sure about anyway. All I do know is um, if, you, uh, if you look at, you know, the weekly candles, here, let's get rid of this, I'll, I'll, I'll redraw all that. We have, uh, we have the, the tweezer top weekly channel or weekly candles. I, I shorted the Aussie earlier this week, made some money. <clears throat> I shorted like on Sunday, or no, I was short on Friday, closed on Sunday, closed, I shorted again Monday, I think I closed out for a few pips, you know, like maybe 10 or 20 pips or whatever, Monday, Tuesday, and then I haven't, I haven't dealt with the Aussie since then, okay, but um, the Aussie is, is made a little bit of a recovery, and if you look at the, um, let's just take from like the, the, the spike highs here from two weeks ago, right, to the low, you're at a 38% retracement. Obviously, we have some horizontal resistance here too, right? You guys can see that right, right there. It's pretty clear. All right, now if you take this last leg down, this is a 50% retracement thus far, which is also, uh, you know, a, a, a FIB confluence right here. So if, if Janet Yellen wasn't speaking in, 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 in two hours, uh, I would be shorting the Aussie right now. Like... It makes sense to me. It makes sense to short the Aussie, like right here. But I'm not going to, obviously. Not, not, I'm, not, I'm not establishing new positions just ahead of uh, Janet Yellen's speech. But I do think that um, this is pretty key resistance today. And that's at um, uh, 76.55, and we're at 76.45 basically right now. Now, 618 and the 50% retracement, this, this could actually happen ahead of Janet Yellen's speech. We could actually see this and then, you know, hit some resistance up here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually, because that's obviously there's a 618 and then a 50% retracement. Confluence, right? So that's at 7670. I'm going to write that down as resistance today. It's not great resistance. It's just uh, it's resistance. All right, so we are in obviously a range. Now I say we're in a range because if you look at the daily chart, you know we're in the we're in this big triangle formation, right? Up against butted up against major weekly trend line resistance. It's all right here. Now support. Hard to say. We're supporting the Aussie is. I mean, I, I could write uh, seventy-five, eighty-five, which we wrote down yesterday. Which, do, believe it or not, is not very far from where we're at. This, this has been a tight range all week. I mean, if you look at like we've had a seventy pip trading range pretty much all week, pretty much since like Monday. I mean, the lower end of that range comes in at uh, seventy-five, ninety, and just below that, seventy-five, eighty-five. Okay. I'll write that down. It's just 
I, I don't I don't have a good uh, 75 85 I, I don't really have a good feeling about the Aussie US dollar at the moment like what to do with it you know what I mean okay let's go over the dollar index you, you guys have already seen the dollar index I don't have to harp on this all, all I'm gonna say is um, trend line support comes in about 9440 resistance is at 95 and that's it I mean it's it's a breakout above or below um, you know I think it makes sense that's channel support that's horizontal resistance and I think it makes sense if, if, you, if you guys want to trade the dollar you wait for it to break above or below I mean if, if you really want to get directional with the dollar you, you just have to wait till we break above this or below here uh, you know it's pretty simple uh, here let's let's do this pretty simple right now you know above there oops don't want to do that Or below there okay and and you just kind of have to wait for it to you know wait for it to wait for it to break I, I, I don't I don't you know I don't think you need to be a hero right now and try to anticipate I'm like I said I'm long the dollar Swiss just but but I got long the dollar Swiss three days ago you know it's not not like I'm out there establishing positions right now ahead of you know Janet Yellen's speech and I'm sitting in a profitable position I'm you know I'm either gonna get you know, stopped out for break even, or you know, I'm going to make some money. So, um, but to establish a new position right now in the dollar, it's uh, you know, you're you're just you're just you know, rolling the dice if if you're doing it right now. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, let's take a look at the peso. Now, the peso should be an interesting currency to trade um, today I, I uh, this is um, God, man, I can't believe we've given all this back I traded this early this week and I bought it here and sold it here and I missed this whole damn move we are really on channel support right now or trying to break through channel support now the thing about the peso is the peso is very much a risk appetite risk aversion tool you know alongside moving moving with the dollar trend so you got to be really careful trading the, the 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 peso today and I don't but I th right, let me take let me take a step back for a second I think the dollar peso will be good Based on today's um, based on today's situation, it should be really it, it should be worth trading now. And the reason why I say that is because if if Janet Yellen is hawkish, um, that's going to be bearish for equities too. You know what I mean? If she's hawk more hawkish than uh, um, if if, if uh, if if Janet Yellen's more hawkish than the market really wants, then the stock market is going to probably sell off and the dollar will rally. I think you're going to see a very inverse relationship between the dollar and stocks today, in my opinion. Now, if that happens, uh, we break above 1840, we'll see a bit of a squeeze. Then support is probably right around here. I mean, not much lower than where we're at. Let's get rid of this. We don't need that now. I, I don't. I, I'm not going to buy the peso right now. I would, but I, but I, but I would think that if uh, if she's hawkish, you know, you got to buy it above 1840 because we're going to squeeze. Here, I'm just going to write this down. 1834. 
this is one of those that this is one of those you have to keep an eye on because it, it can creep up on you really fast you know it can just kind of explode and take off and, and you'll go what the hell you know all right let's take a look at this Nordic currencies let's take a look at the Norwegian krona uh, everybody should know 825 and 812 uh, I take I got to take a step back into the in the daily chart okay so here's your daily on the US dollar Norwegian krona we are threatening to go back into the apex of this triangle or break down today okay below 812 is very bearish for the US dollar Norwegian krona And back above 825, it's actually 826 now that I'm thinking about it. Back above 826 will create a bit of a squeeze. We are in a range because, you know, if we, we squeeze above 826, it's going to right back up into the triangle. Okay. And let's go over to the Swedish Krona. So look at how important this support is. Now, again, if it wasn't Janet Yellen speaking today, I would be buying the dollar, uh, dollar Swedish Krona right now. I would be. I'd be buying it right now. But <laughs> there's obviously a lot of event risk at the moment. So <laughs> I, it's like uh, if under normal conditions, this is like, perfect risk reward it's like okay well below here you know I know it's uh, I know I, I get stopped out but above here you know we you know we head back to 870 it's great risk reward to be on the long side I just I you know obviously I can't do it ahead of GDP and Janet Yellen I just it's not it doesn't make any sense but support is at 833.50 resistance at 843 Eight point three four fifty. Is that the right? Eight three, is it three four? Three three. Sorry. Three three fifty and resistance is at eight forty two fifty eight. And the, the you know the good news is about the uh, the Swedish krona is we are in we are in. We're going to break out one one direction or the other today, okay. And um, the longer term view of the U.S. dollar Swedish krona is we got this big big ass channel or big weekly uh, flag pattern that's still working. It, frankly. The um, we really need to. I would say within the next couple of weeks, the U.S. dollar Swedish krona needs to stage an upside break. Okay, um, we we really in order for this 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 weekly flag to play out, we really I would say over the next month have to break higher because if we prolong this sideways chop much longer on the weekly charts then you know the flag will exceed 50% of the distance between you know the of the flagpole and then you kind of nullify the 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 um the bull flag expectations okay we're ready to go we're done. Your bias charts are ready. You guys ready? You guys ready for GDP? You guys ready for, ready for Janet Yellen? I hope so. Oh, look at the dollar Swiss hitting new highs. <laughs>